founded in 1936, in the midst of the Great Depression, the Society for the Psychological Study of Social Issues, more commonly known as SPICI, set out to imagine how psychology could better serve society. Our purpose was twofold. One, we would encourage research on those psychological problems most vitally related to modern social, economic, and political policies. I said clean, you say what? Clean! Water! Clean! Water! Two, we would help the public and its representatives understand and use these scientific psychological contributions for the formation of social policies. Now, in 2021, the year in which Spissy celebrates its 85th anniversary, we look back at one story that illuminates who we are as scholars, educators, and activists. The policy of apartheid, literally separateness, has been elevated by the government of South Africa. The system of apartheid means deliberate, systematic, institutionalized racial discrimination. It was brutal, it was draconian, it was dehumanizing, and it created a culture that deprived people of basic human rights. They were not allowed an, an education. They were deprived of job opportunities. They were segregated. There was a fundamental belief that the African population was fundamentally inferior as human beings. And therefore, they had to be controlled by the government. And so the, the apartheid system began as a way of controlling people then expanded with new laws, new principles, new legislation. And so if you were black, you have virtually no rights. The most famous prisoner was Nelson Mandela, Nelson who Mandela. was the leader of the anti-apartheid movement, had been incarcerated for decades by the South African government. Our aim cannot be to punish South Africa with economic sanctions that would President Reagan had threatened to veto a bill enacting sanctions against South Africa, which would prevent the U.S. government from doing business with South Africa because of apartheid. So I wrote to my friend uh, Arnie Kahn, let's do something to oppose Ronald Reagan's veto of that bill. So we came up with this idea to hold a more or less a rally and a march in front of the embassy of South Africa in Washington, D.C. We approached these major speakers, Hal Fairchild, president of the Association of Black Psychologists, Bonnie Strickland, APA president, Carolyn Payton, who had been one of the founders of the Peace Corps, also came and spoke. We marched, we sang, we chanted, we got people to honk their horns, and we decided to establish something called Psychologists Against Apartheid. It was just a grassroots group. First of all, we educated ourselves as to what was going on there. Secondly, we put our shoulders to the wheel and signed petitions, etc. Once you get involved in grassroots action, it affects the issues that you want to study. And SPICI is the home base for exactly that kind of psychologist. The Psychologist Against Apartheid Vigil of 1986 also coincided with another big moment for SPICI our movement to become an NGO with consultative status at the United Nations. I went to visit the UN as a tourist. While I was there, I saw a mural that listed all of the non-governmental organizations that had status with the United Nations. And at the top, it said Association for Women in Psychology. And I thought to myself, Wow, if AWP can be a member of the NGOs in consultative status with the United Nations, why not SPICI? At the United Nations in New York. SPICI has a natural affinity, I think, to the purpose and goals of the United Nations. NGO status means that you have a pass to enter the UN building and to observe certain meetings that are taking place there and receive 
material which the UN wants organizations like yours to disseminate to their members. The Spissy newsletter had a continuing column by our NGO representative communicating to us issues that the UN was working on that would be of interest to social psychologists. Then the next step was to obtain what they call consultative status. It meant that you could speak up at meetings and not just listen, but that's really all due to Hedwin, Pete, and Coran, who uh, did the actual work. They showed up at the meetings. They went to the UN. They attended. They spoke up. Over the years, Spissy has been at the forefront of social justice and how social science would be leveraged to create social change through legislative, political, and other processes. Our representation at the UN, for example, is, is another way in which we, we leverage into uh, these international kinds of issues. And Spissy continues to be involved in, in policy related to other countries and issues that of social justice, that's fundamental SPICI. According to Dr. Althea Smith, a SPICI UN NGO representative at the time, the UN played a crucial role in pressuring South Africa by encouraging arms and oil embargoes, by promoting divestiture, and by encouraging the boycotting of certain sporting and cultural events. In 1991, in response to apartheid resistance in the country, internal and external economic pressure and dissent within the ruling Nationalist Party. Apartheid ended. The elimination of apartheid was a fundamental change in South African society. From Mandela's release from prison until the Constitution took over, that period was very interesting and complicated. There was still a lot of brutality. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of repression. I think trauma is one of the biggest aspects of what happened during apartheid. So I think Ubuntu is a fundamental principle that I think South Africa is striving, has been striving to make fundamentally valid as a representation of the culture. I think the uh, principle of forgiveness was really important to it. And uh, the, the meaning of Ubuntu as I formally think about it is the expression that my humanity is inextricably bound up in yours. I am human because I belong, I participate, I share. How can we live together in harmony and build a country that's good for all of us? You had to extricate individuals from their circumstance, but you also had to put in place institutional processes and structures that would support the high ambition of a socially just society based in humanity and fundamental rights for everyone. And I think Tutu and Mandela created a, a cultural sensibility that enabled that process to go forward. Let us build on the proud tradition of unity in action. Spissy scholars, educators, and activists were eager to see how this great undertaking would be realized. Now, how do we improve the lot of both of us? In this way, I believe, is the truest path to peace. The People of People Ambassadors Program it was designed as a way of promoting communication and interaction across the globe. I had just been elected president, and so when People of People asked if Spissy was interested in participating in an exchange, I looked at it and thought about it and said, wow. This would be fantastic. It would be a great opportunity for us to learn more about the principles underlying creating a, a new reality in a, in a country, a reality that is fundamentally about human justice. And that's certainly always been the goal of SPICI. The social issue is human justice, is fundamentally the issue that SPICI represents. The trip was designed to bring together psychologists, sociologists, psychiatrists, and journalists to acquaint ourselves with the truth and reconciliation movement that was occurring there. And we, we created a delegation of over 40 people. And our interests were in 
truth and reconciliation. And the basic question is how did South Africa get from apartheid to where it was? We are marching to a new future based on strong foundations of respect for each other. The first piece of it was the apartheid criminals had to be accountable. And if they wanted to be released from prison or wherever they were because of the atrocities that they personally committed, they had to come forward and confess to show remorse and to basically ask for forgiveness. Those who tried to stood up, they were kicked at the, and shot at. And those who have been brutalized could come forward and document the brutality exercised against them. They were entitled to reparations. And that process enabled, I think, the transition from apartheid to democracy. I think finding that pathway, that, that connection, and maybe truth and reconciliation is the way to make that connection that forges forgiveness with assertiveness and activism. That may be the, the mechanism that we take away from South Africa. The most important part of the tour for me was taking a boat to a place called Robben Island, the place where prisoners were kept in isolation from all the rest of the civilization. Leaders of the anti-apartheid movement had been incarcerated there for decades. And we were guided by an ex-prisoner who showed us uh, the actual cell that Nelson Mandela was uh, incarcerated in. It gave us the history of what it was like to be there. One of the things that I took with me on the trip was a book that I had compiled of the activities that we had engaged in. In there, I had photographs, flyers, press releases, and other memorabilia about the rally that we had organized in front of the South African Embassy in Washington, D.C. While we were visiting the prison on Robben Island, I took that booklet and gave it to our guide, who was an ex-prisoner. And I said something like, this may be a small piece of history, but I want you to know that uh, people all over the world we're active in uh, getting rid of the vision. SWISI as a whole is something bigger than its members, but it is, it, it is not more than its members with respect to the work that we do. Over the years, SWISI has been uh, at the forefront of social justice. Involvement in social issues is two-pronged. You want to change the system, but it also energizes you and your compatriots to do a better job at whatever you're doing. So I would emphasize that the involvement of SPISI in the anti-apartheid movement had a good effect on SPISI because it legitimized psychologists being involved in such things. Yes, we want it to have an effect, but it was inconsequential compared to the effect it had on us. And it's remarkable to me that we're in this place at this time, given where we started. It's a tribute to resilience, dedication, commitment of many, many people, of brilliance, of uh, sacrifice. And I think that Spissy has been able to harness that energy, that commitment over such a long period of time and enabled us to represent the values that that we have and that SPISI has that makes it such a special organization. We're almost like a, an energy, a, a symbolic representation of things that matter. And uh, we are people who are committed and dedicated to that proposition and support our members, support our communities, support our, our families and strive in every way to make a difference, a positive difference in people's lives is really a tribute to what Spissy is, was, and will continue to be.